Thank you very much. Um, and now to trust the Zimbabwe Lawyers for Human Rights produced a reader entitled Clearing the Mist, which outlined what needed to be done legally to align the existing laws with the new constitution and prerequisites before the president pro proclaims a date for election. Given the judgment, do you think that is practical within the, the period stated to meet the prerequisites around amendments, voter registration, etc.? And the new constitution says the next election should be held under electoral laws compliant with this constitution. Is this possible to do given the small um, constitutional court window? I just want to clear also the mist around that, uh, I would say, the, leg, uh, the, the document by us as Bible lawyers. It's actually not mist, I think it's a cloud. We want to clear the cloud, not the mist, because actually this uh, mist has turned into a real big cloud. In fact, the judgment by the Supreme Court is impracticable and unlawful in the sense that it, it cannot be adhered to. You cannot give a judgment that's impossible to comply with. And that is the judgment that we, we are holding in my hands. It's impossible. In fact, if you are in contempt of a court order, that's not enforceable. I don't think you can be in contempt. Uh, one judge said that if you are unlawfully held by the police and you run away, you cannot be found guilty of escaping from lawful custody. <laughs> Right. The thing that must be done before the 31st or any other date is that all amendments to the electoral law and election related legislation must be finalized and operational by the date of voting. Then a third day voter registration and inspection exercise should have been carried out. A third day voter registration after the new constitution, uh, after from, uh, from the uh, from, uh, if a date is announced, there must be that period of, of, of voter registration before elections are held, so it's impossible now. Once an election date is proclaimed, a minimum of 44 days between the date of proclamation and the date of nomination, and then a further 30 days between the sitting of the nomination court and polling day must elapse before actual voting. And if I remember well, the new constitution remove Saturdays and Sundays as days in terms of definition. So you are removing holidays, you are removing Saturdays and Sundays in terms of definition of a day. So you can imagine how many days we have left. So it's impossible. So all we are saying is that also in terms of the old constitution which the Supreme Court was grappling with, in fact, Justice Joseph said uh, the papers were voluminous and unnecessarily argumentative, but the issue to be decided was the meaning of section 58, subsection 1. And he also gave a voluminous decision in interpreting um, section 58, 1. But our interpretation is that the period of four months must run from the date parliament is dissolved to the elections, not four months before the date of dissolution. In other words, from the 29th of June, we have four months within which elections will be held. And still, anybody who wants to be another jealous Mawarire can still go back to court and say, I think you made an error. The problem we have with uh, the situation here now is that this was interpreted by the highest court. And I think it was, um, if it is a highest court and it makes a grave error, it's difficult. But if you allege an infringement of your right by the same court, you have a right to go and say, my right has been infringed. So it's impossible to comply with that order from looking at the constitution. It's an unconstitutional judgment looking at it from the perspective of the new constitution. That's all I can say. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.